These are Cadillac XLR headlight lenses. They don't make the Cadillac XLR anymore and these lenses are in pretty rough shape already. They seem to be not readily available. So we are gonna make some molds to make multiple sets of these Cadillac lenses. My name is Eric Strebel. I'm an industrial designer. Welcome to my channel about product design and making. Do you ever get home with all your things, but you have nowhere to set them? So they all just end up in an ugly, disorganized, and hard to work with pile like this, causing you unneeded stress? Well, don't let it ruin your life. Just get an Alfred backpack hanger. It's reliable, versatile, sturdy, and it holds your stuff. Available in stainless steel and aluminum. Get yours today! This video's sponsor is Jigga. It's one of my new manufacturing partners. I create the CAD, I upload it, I specify the material that I want, I pick the vetted supplier that I like, kick off the project and pay, communicate with them if they have any questions, wait for the part to show up, and boom, you get something like this. Check them out for your next project, Jigga. .io. Oh, I love saying Jiga. The first thing we're going to do is build the mold boxes. So these mold boxes are going to be <clears throat> for a cut mold. And I don't really make a lot of cut molds. Um, and I'll explain a little bit more about what a cut mold is as we go along in the video. I'm using some three quarter inch particle board with uh, laminate on top of it, like a melamine, and then we're gonna cut the walls out of some foam core. So pretty inexpensive uh, mold box, pretty cheap and, and, and easy, uh, a little less fancy than normally. Uh, the way I make a mold box out of wood and everything and so this is kind of kind of down and dirty An easy way to sort of bang a mold box out hot glue the sides on and We've made the mold box essentially more or less to the shape of the two lenses that we're going to be molding and then we'll uh, just cover up the holes The lenses are in pretty rough shape and they need to be cleaned up. So we need to polish them and fix some of the damage. And we just polish them out the, the best that we can. Now, ideally, these lenses um, should be separated from the backing. You can see underneath my fingers here, there's actually a strip that goes around and they, it should be separated from that. But the client chose to just keep it all together as one and then deal deal with that so there's some chips and some cracks uh, and they need to be repaired otherwise it's going to be too much work for every single one this is the little channel on the back side and some of that weather stripping there that the black is actually a piece of um, sealant and it should be removed, but the client decided not to remove it. Um, so what we're doing here with a little bit of clay is to fill that in and complete the channel. A cut mold means that we're gonna pour one giant block of silicone, because otherwise I would have to clay up the lens and it's a relatively, you know, organic kind of shape and it's not flat on anything. So there would be a fair amount of work to make clay walls and everything. And I wanted to forego that. And so we're gonna do this cut mold. Now to do that, we need to add the vents and the pour sprues to the part. And then we'll end up hanging this thing inside the mold box. So what I'm doing here is basically mapping out where these pour vents and uh, the sprues and things go on the, on the actual lens. So 
we'll use some acrylic for that and I'll turn on the lathe here and we'll just uh, true up the acrylic. It's a little overkill for this kind of a thing, but it does give us a really nice square uh, end there. And so I'm laying out where these poor sprues and these vents go and then I'm delicately sort of balancing them in the air uh, to hold the thing in place. And I'm super gluing these things in place and we add a little bit of clay on the bottom of the vent to hold it in, in place. So with a cut mold, we're gonna add some tape along where the seam is gonna be and this is where we're gonna cut down into and we tape around the edges 360 and then we come back and add some blue marker onto the top edge of the tape and this allows us to see that top edge so we know where to cut down to so this is just kind of a dirty quick way to make a mold and cast it in one piece I'll flip the part over and then we're going to add some supports basically and this is what we're going to use to suspend a thing inside the mold box and some bamboo sticks and a piece of foam core and here you can see the part hanging upside down we'll hot glue everything in place and then we'll add the rest of the vents on the high side of that channel so we'll pour in where the clear is and then we'll have those vents on the high side so we don't have any trapped air bubbles and additionally we're going to add in this block to take up some volume of the silicone just to save on silicone now when you make a cup mold you need to have a clear silicone something that you can see through so most tin cure silicones are not clear. So we end up using a platinum silicone here so that we can kind of see where to cut into the mold and so we can see those blue lines. So cure inhibition was a big thing. We did a bunch of tests um, on various surfaces of the lenses to make sure that we're not gonna have any cure inhibition. This is a really, really big deal for us because you do not want to be pouring this huge block of silicone and then have some sort of cure inhibition after you've spent, you know, $500 on silicone uh, to make this mold. So degas the silicone really well, get all the bubbles out. I, I don't have a big enough tank, quite honestly. This is a three gallon tank. I probably need a bigger one to degas with, but we have to make do with what we got. And we have to pour multiple uh, buckets uh, of silicone because I can't degas a big enough volume of silicone at one time. So we'll do this in stages so that we can fill this because there's a, a, a huge volume that has to be filled to make these molds. I probably pour three buckets to get to the top and get this thing filled. It takes that much. And then we run the vibration table there on the side to help uh, float the bubbles to the top. And then this is the second one. In this case, we've added corner pieces in the corners to take up more volume. Uh, because there's just so much silicone to make a mold like this and we have to scrape up all the silicone that we can get just just to make this work and, and fill up the molds but eventually we get there and uh, this is what we get all right these are the cured molds so we need to disassemble them the first thing we're going to do is pour, uh, remove the pour and the vent sprues and the supports off the top and then we'll start to remove the sides of the uh, mold boxes. Now we did wax them and put some wax in there and then this helped uh, with the release of the sides and but all of this is a fair amount of work to take everything out. And now we need to release the bottom and re remove the rest of the negative spaces so that we can ultimately cut 
into this. Now, just removing this part at the top here, that's a negative space. It's a 3D printed part. Uh, we had to print it in ABS, so we didn't have any cure inhibition. And we're gonna take a scalpel and we're gonna cut into the mold and you can see sort of where the blue is in the tape. And we have to work our way down there to the tape so that we can get to that. Now, so the tape is ultimately the split line. And once we can get to that tape, then we'll be able to basically pull the inside of the mold out, the one, the one part. Now, the silicone is pretty stiff here. And we use a pair of pliers. They actually make some reverse pliers that you know a lot of industry people use for this kind of a thing. We don't make these molds very often, and I do not have a pair of those sort of tools. And we are using air and everything to get it apart, and we need a little bit of force. Now, now the hard part, of course, is getting the actual part out, and we cut. Uh, the edge here so that we can pry the mold apart and get the part out Air works pretty good to release everything to separate the parts and this is quite helpful um, We're gonna do this on the second one and we use a little bit of wave pattern where we can to lock the two pieces together And again, we need to make some cuts here so we can release the original parts pop this back together Let's make some parts. So we'll use some tape, tape that thing up really good. And we put the insert back in there. Uh, we thought we were gonna need the insert back there to keep the thing from folding in on itself, but the silicone is plenty strong enough. So we're using BJB's uh, WC85. This is a UV stable resin. And we pour it in the one spot and you can see the resin come out the pour holes there and then we place that one one at a time we put that in our 10 gallon pressure tank we can't do two at a time i wish we could it's just uh, unmanageable and then we let that cure with heat under pressure 60 psi and you, we, we heat it let's take the part apart Usually let, the, let them cure overnight, or at least if we pour in the morning, then we can pull them apart in the afternoon. And you can see uh, the flash on the sides of these things. Now this one, we take them out with air. We actually shattered the part. <laughs> so this one got messed up, so you gotta be careful. We put a little too much air pressure in there and it just shattered the thing. And so we, <laughs> we failed. We, we gotta do another one. So. Try this again, put the tape around, put the top part in, pour our silicone in, I'm sorry, pour our resin in, let that come out the vent holes, and we put it on the grate so we can just slide it right into the tank without having to lift it up. There you go, it's a little easier that way. In the tank, and we'll let that cure. Now, once that's cured, we'll pull it out and we'll see what we got. We try to trim off all the flash. So this is what you get when you get this cut mold. It's not as precise as some of the other molds that we make. It's meant to be cheap and fast and quick. Um, it, mainly if you're making one or two, now we end up making 10 sets and I, I wouldn't recommend that for 10 sets. It's a bit much. The first few came out pretty decent, but over time we're getting some wear on the mold and, and it's starting to disintegrate and some cleanup is required. And so every single one is going to require a little bit of dremeling and a little bit of work. Like I said, this, this process, this mold making process is great for one or two. But in this volume capacity, the molds start to disintegrate. And I, in hindsight, you know, probably should have built a traditional two-part mold with clearer um, 
you know, split lines and stuff that comes apart easier. And, you know, we got to dig parts out. This is actually silicone and, and it gets caught in that groove. It's not ideal. And so we end up having to sort of patch the mold back together every single time. And we have to do cleanup on the parts. And so for a volume where we're doing 10 parts or 10 sets, it's not ideal. We ended up having to do a lot of cleanup and saving the time in the beginning with this cut mold ends up not really being worth it because we have to spend so much time cleaning up the parts and getting nice parts for uh, our customer. Because the molds end up being in such bad shape, there we have to make every part count and a few of them have little air bubbles. So what we end up doing is filling those air bubbles. We put a little clay around that to contain the resin and we make sure the air gets in there and we fill those spots and then we put the part back in the tank. And then we've got to come through and remove the clay, sand, you know, file and sand the part to sort of salvage the part because the part's decent, but it, it's got a couple blemishes. And so we have to go back and kind of salvage it, file it, sand it, and then ultimately we're going to have to polish it. So, you know, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't do this method again, not for this sort of volume of parts that we have to make. It's probably better to spend the time and make a serious real mold in the beginning and why it's, you know, spends a fair amount of time sanding and then ultimately polishing the parts to get us our good final parts in the end. They come out nice, um, but we really spent more time than I wanted to in terms of cleaning up these parts in the end to get the 10 sets. These are the 10 sets that we finished and shipped off to the customer. Uh, they're out there, he's selling them. Um, I don't have a link, um, but we'll reach out to the customer again if we do get a link where he's selling them, if he has any left. We'll post that below if you want to get some. And that is how you make uh, Cadillac XLR headlight lenses. Make sure you give the video a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so. Make sure to hit the bell so you get notifications every time I have a new video. Don't forget to follow me on social media at Bots and Design. I'm now on Blue Sky and unfortunately still on Instagram. Rock on. Don't forget to check out the t-shirts and hoodies in the merch shelf below. Click here to check out some of the other design and making videos that I have that you might enjoy.